I am joined by a member of one of my all-time favorite bands, uh, Hall and & Oates, and he's also a solo artist, for those that don't know. It's Mr. Elliot Lewis. I have him here today. This is also going to be on YouTube uh, a few days after the podcast goes live, so how you doing? Cool. I'm doing great, man. I'm doing well. It's good to see you. <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh now we're gonna get into the we're gonna get into the Hall and Oates stuff, obviously, but I, I want to start sure. with your you're one of the the busiest uh, musicians that I know. <laughs> I you know, and I, I believe you're a, you're in New England, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, right now I'm in uh, like New Haven County. Yeah, you're not too far from me. I'm in Rhode Island. So, and every time I, I yep. look up, you are playing a solo date somewhere, and <laughs> and it's not yeah. ju- it's not just like you know. Yeah, and I, I saw that you're going down to Florida for the first time with the solo band. Exactly. Coming up. Yeah. So, 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 uh, Hall and Oates have been out uh, for a month straight. Uh, so we had a little break. We've been out for a month. I've came home for a week and just did a couple of shows, a couple of solo shows, and now we leave for um, Florida on uh, tomorrow morning. So we uh, we start in Miami. We uh, Hall and Oates have a show there, and then the second day in, I have a solo show in uh, Delray Beach, and this will be my first solo show in Florida. In Florida so I'm yeah. looking forward to it. Yeah. Now, when you do, when you do, I, I notice I've been looking at your website, and you have your mm-hmm. your album that came out in 2016 called Adventure. Yeah. And you also have a couple of other uh, live out CDs or you know downloads that you have. I noticed that the songs, and maybe you just don't have it listed, but the songs that are on the live CDs aren't on Adventure yet. It's, exactly. So what, where are those? Where are those songs from? Are it just something that you never recorded, or it, you just? No, actually, I think there might be one song on the live record okay. that ha- that didn't exist already on a studio record. Yeah. But but what I've been doing, Rich, is I've been putting out my own sort of independent right, CDs. Right. Pretty much every year, almost every year for the past six or seven years. So I've accumulated a lot of my own independent releases. So what happened was last year I got this offer out of the blue to uh, to sign with uh, Universal. Yep. So what we did is we took a sort of like a best of almost compilation. Of, we cherry picked a few things off of my mm-hmm. independent releases, EPs and stuff, put them together. And then I added about four. Songs and actually did a cover of a Bad Company song. Right, I was because, get uh, to that. The, right. Yeah, the label that signed me, you know, they thought I kind of they re- I reminded them of Vintage Bad Company. Ex- well, that's that's what I was going to bring up because I when I listened to I went through the tracks and I'm like it's it's nice yeah. and it's nice and stripped down. There's no yes. there's no tricks going on. It's just drums, bass, couple, maybe a couple of guitars, but mostly one guitar, your voice, yep. back and vocals, little, and little B three in the background. Yeah, in there. right. Really, which kind of comes in when I'm doing a solo to give some some chordal uh, yep. uh, backdrop. Yeah, yeah, it's not o- not overproduced, so which like a lot of stuff these days is. So it was, right. it was kind of refreshing to hear just the bare bones. Yeah. Stuff. So the live record, um, yeah, as you were mentioning, I go out to the Midwest a lot. Yep. So I tour in Ohio and in Michigan and in, uh, Indiana. So I recorded this live CD, I guess about three years ago there after going there many, many times. So so that's still, a, like I said, there's one or two songs that I sort of recorded that were just on the live record. Mm-hmm. And some of those existed on some of my EPs. So, uh, but I'm going to sort of probably continue with uh, with Universal for a few years and, and see how that develops. So far, it's been great. Now, the, the other thing, I, for people that don't know your website, it's ElliotLewis.com. The other thing I noticed was your photography on there, which was actually really good. Yeah. I was checking oh, out thanks. some of those. <laughs> and I can imagine, you know, getting to travel the world that you can, you know, you hit some spots that you just, you, yeah. you have your camera all the time and you can just, you just let it go right there. So Exactly. That's when I really actually get a lot of inspiration to shoot. When I'm home, I get so busy sort yeah. of in my musical career that, that I don't get a lot of chance to shoot. So uh, for me, it started back when I was an average white man. So I was an mm-hmm. average white yeah, man yep. before, you know, so... Uh, so that was always an opportunity to uh, to take my camera along because with that band we we traveled internationally a lot. Uh, with Hall and Oates, you know, we go over Japan. Um, we're going to the UK once yep. this year, but but with Average White Band, we would be through France and Italy and all over Europe. So it was always a great opportunity to shoot. So it sort of started back then for me. Yeah, you got a bunch of. Uh 
one of my favorite ones on there was the uh, the Red Rocks one. Oh yeah, it's just uh, yeah. Now and you say and people for people that don't know you do sell yeah. prints of them, yeah. so you can check it out. Yeah. I used, you know, I got enough requests, and it was always just a hobby for me. Right, it was right, always yep. just like a side thing. And then um, when I joined Hall and Oates, uh, Daryl sold some of my black and whites, and he said, "Hey, why don't you shoot us? Because we always need photographs." So mm -hmm. it was like, of course, I would love to, I'd be honored to. And one thing led into another, and I so I started shooting for a lot of their press fo uh, photographs, and then I ended up shooting one one of the and then Daryl asked me to do a solo record, and then I shot one of John's solo records. So it's turned into a thing, and then I started uh, exhibiting a couple of things in some small galleries. So I love it. It's a side project, but but I love doing it. Kind of goes hand in hand with music. Oh for yeah, me. Def definitely. And and one of the yeah. other things that uh, you know you seem to love is guitars. And this podcast is geared towards guitar players and gear and stuff like that. And you can nice. see behind me. I got. I mean, I'm in this tiny room, and I'm just like. I stacked. see an old Sprat. <laughs> well, it's a, actually it's a '98. Um, it looks it old crazy. because uh, the singer in my band actually is an airbrush artist. If you ever need work done, look him up. He does uh, goalie masks for the NHL and stuff. But he That's actually pa he painted it so it look relic in age. But but anyway. Yeah. The uh, so that's. That's one of the things that I like to talk about here. And recently, you had posted a photo of a guitar. Uh, mm -hmm. It looked like a Gibson, but I'm. It, I I was looking at the headstock. Was it a Gibson or was it? It. Yeah, it's an Epiphone. So 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 I I, uh, I love um, Gibson designs. I've, mm -hmm. I use a lot of different guitars. I've been using also Reverend guitars for some years, yep. which are fantastic guitars. Uh, but I've always been really drawn to Gibson. Uh, uh, styles, Gibson designs. I love the quirky flying V's and Explorers and, th and uh, Firebirds and stuff. Yep. So um, I developed, a, eventually developed a relationship with uh, with Gibson brands, and I thought I would start with the Epiphone brand since it's a it's a it's a more affordable version. <laughs> yep. And so I've sort of handpicked a couple of really great uh, Epiphones, and so I have. Uh, they just happened to reissue at the same time a V. And the Explorer, uh, very true to the 58 designs. And if, mm -hmm. as you know, you, as a guitar player, try to find a Gibson version yeah. will, will be the, the, the cost of a sa of a house. Yep. <laughs> yep. So uh, it's great. And uh, I just acquired a uh, SG as well. And what I've done is I put all these uh, all these humbucker guitars, I put in uh, some Seymour Duncan, uh, their P90 equivalents. Mm -hmm. They're called Fat Cats. So, yep. so they're all so, working for me. So when you're doing the solo the solo gigs, what as far as your amp, like what are you playing out of these days? I'm all direct. I'm, I, since oh, I've really been doing frequently my solo shows as a guitar player, which is really what I am more, right, right. more or less. Uh, I, I've been ampless. So what are you uh, using? So I, I kind of embrace that whole thing. I, I do uh, too, for the mo you know for the most part. Yeah. When, I, when I play a big outdoor gig, I'll I'll, let, I'll bring the amp. But when I play a small yeah. smaller place, I I just run direct with in ears, and it's yep. So much the easier. thing, and I've gone through a lot of stuff. The thing yep. that kind of inspired me to do it was I don't know if you know he's a great guitar player. You must know Johnny A. Yeah, yeah. Johnny A. Great player. Uh, when I saw, I opened up for uh, uh, Monty Montgomery and 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 Johnny A. Um, I, I noticed he was doing that, and I thought, wow, this guy's got an amazing tone. So it inspired me to do that. So the th I went I went through a lot of stuff and ended up settling on. Uh, the Tech 21 stuff. Yes. Actually, now it's a combination of Tech 21 and some some boss stuff, uh, and it works well for me. It's you know as pedal boards change frequently, yes. we try new <laughs> things. You know, but the Sans amp stuff, the Tech 21, really respond like a a, a real amp. So now, um, it, using like, is like the Fly Rig one, or is it just uh, the I uh, use the I use the Fly Rig. I have the Richie Coatsen model. That's the good one. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah it's great. And uh, right now I've settled on their uh, character series. I have a few of them. Yep. I love the British one, but the one that really works well for me is the, uh, I think it's called Leeds. It's the equivalent of a high watt. High watt, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, those so, are so it's pretty minimal. Yeah, delay that in, in a boss unit, which actually sounds amazing. I bought it just to kind of take it down the road. He went on with Hall and Oates, is the GT1. Mm -hmm. It's a small it's little small, multi effect yeah, yeah. Uh, guy. Yeah, it's like it's, it's like a condensed version of the GT8. 
Exactly. Much, yeah. 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 They're their newest models and man it sounds fantastic. So I've been using that in conjunction and uh, and then I always use a, a shore wireless system because my my own band is pretty small so when I'm doing my shows I like to get out and move around the right. audience. So yep. I've always got a shore wireless as well. Yeah, the Tech 21, I mean for for a re relatively small company, this stuff is rock yeah. solid. It's rock solid. It is. I, I used to have a couple of the little uh, the uh, full range, full response speakers that they make, the little, yep. the 112s, and yeah, I mean, yeah, the power engine or something. Like power that. engine, yeah. that's what it, yeah, and yeah. those those they're things, great. they'll last, they last for years, and you can beat the hell out of them in there. Yeah, <laughs> they're good with. They're with great the, company, exactly yeah. like you said. They're small company, but you know, and all their their boxes and their pedals are all analog, so they yes. they definitely have a different sort of tone. Now, like an amp, so uh, yeah, they're great. I all I so many times. Uh, I always get from players like, "Where is your amp? Is it off stage?" <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, gotten that, yeah. I have an amp. I've gotten that too. I, and I've gone through, I've gone through every direct box that you could, you know, flop yeah. thing that you can. Uh, I'm on line six right now, so I've been using them for a while. But yeah. uh, so when you're when you're playing keyboards with Hall and Oates, what do you? I, mm -hmm. This would be a question for the keyboard player in my band, John. Uh, yeah. What are you playing usually live with them as far as keyboards go? Two things now. Um, I was using, when I first started uh, in the band, I went out and sort of looked for the best sort of a B3 emulator. Yep. So I used the Nord. I had bought myself a Nord, which served me well for years. And then Hammond sort of tracked me down, and uh, they became fans of the Live from Daryl's House show. So they, they asked me if I wanted to try out one of their, uh, at the time it was new, it was sort of a replacement for a and piano and Rhodes in one box. So it's called the SK-1. Yep. So I use an SK-1, SK-2, uh, which are fantastic. And uh, recently I just added a, a, a Roland piece to the to the, to, to the mix because uh, Hall & Oates on this tour doing some, some older songs that required me to do a lot of synth stuff, a couple mm -hmm. of solos and stuff. So I've added a Roland as well, a VR-09, which is great as well. So between the two, I'm covered. I don't have. I don't need really like stacks of keyboards. Right, I right. try to. I take their their keyboard stuff and kind of uh, make it a little bit more organic than it was. Not have to try to do all the '80s sounds and stuff yeah, like noticed, that. Yeah, I've noticed. I've noticed that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it more uh, organ and piano based. Mm -hmm. So uh, g going towards Hall and Oates now. So how long have you been in Hall and Oates officially? In thirteen years. Thirteen years. And how yeah. did how did that all how did it happen? Like, how did was it word of mouth? Or was it uh, just someone you knew, they knew? And well, well, I, I, like I was saying, I was in the average white band for thirteen years as well. Yeah. I started with them back in '89. So the bass, original bass player of that band, Alan Gorey and Daryl, have been friends mm -hmm. since the '70s because they were both on Atlantic Records back in the day. So, um, so Alan would work with Daryl when we weren't working the average white band. Uh, they were they were great friends. So, so Daryl used to see the average white band. He would sit in when we would be over in London, and uh, so I met him many times. And uh, eventually, at one of the shows, he kind of came up to me and hinted to me that he wanted me in his band. <laughs> <laughs> So I had to finish out a few more years in the average white band, and then I was ready to leave to kind of pursue my more of my own career. Uh, and I was off the road for a year or two, and then I got a call from T-Bone, his, his right-hand yep. man. Live, and he called me and said, hey, you want to do a... We were thinking of trying to add somebody to do some keys, some guitars, some bass, some vocals, and we thought of you, so you want to come in and do a, do a tour. And that immediately led right into being in the band. So it's, uh, yeah, 13 years now. That's a, yeah. That's a, it. A, um, that, going on live from Daryl's house, I mean, that that show, is, it's amazing. Cause it, and yeah. it, it, the good thing about that show is that I get to hear, you know, obviously I want to hear the Hole and Oates stuff, but I get to hear other mm -hmm. artists that I would never even think of listening to. You yeah. Know? And then, like, one of my favorite episodes was, uh, and, I, and I am a fan of his, was Rob Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. And and the other one that was you guys lucky or was uh, going down to Cabo. Oh, Sammy <laughs> with Hagar. Sammy Hagar, yeah, that that, yeah. that that's on my bucket list to get down to his uh, the cantina down there. But that that was just uh, that's right up my alley. Yeah, he's, he's should, and he's he's turning seventy God. this year and he's having his big bash and 
I don't know how he does it. I don't. And Daryl too. Daryl's get you know right up with him too. And yeah, he doesn't look yeah, it. Doesn't sound seven, like it. I know yeah. both him and John are, are you. You would never know or think that they're that age. You know, and Sammy's another example. You know, uh, the way they've approached music in their career, I think it really keeps you young. But Sammy, Sammy's a great guy. Super humble, super down to earth, totally unpretentious. You know. Well, John, John was like that. I had the I had the pleasure of meeting John a few years ago. We actually we kind of oh. like shared the same venue. He was out on a, a solo road trip, yeah. And uh, he was playing. I guess you would call it the dinner crowd at this venue in Massachusetts. And yeah, my band was playing the night, you know, the night shift or whatever it was. So I got to mm-hmm. got to meet him back in the green room area, and I kind of hit him up for a photo, and he was mm-hmm. he was really gracious about it, but. It, it was it was funny because I play in a, a Bon Jovi tribute band, and he um, so we're taking the photo and I'm I'm like you know I'm standing next to music royalty here I'm I'm ready to this is awesome and, yeah and he and he just blitz out right before that he goes I get to take a picture with Richie Sambora you know <laughs> <laughs> and I still have the picture somewhere uh, it's it's around here somewhere but uh, yeah he was the band was excellent he was you know as cool as can be. And, uh, yeah, John. John's great, and he's the cool thing about John is he's he does so many different things too. You know, he's he's kind of like we we do the same thing. We're busy with so many different yeah. things. You know, he obviously we're full on with Hall and Oates, but he just did a he just uh, released a book, yep. and he's always writing and playing with different people. So he really loves to mix it up a lot. So yeah, he's great. Now, what going back to life from Daryl's house? Do you have a favorite episode or guest that you? played with uh, well, if you had to pick one if you had to pick i know there yeah. was a ton of them that were just out of this world but personal favorites and the most recent one is and i always say this because i always do a cheap trick song now in my mm-hmm. solo show so i'm a massive cheap trick fan and i always kid with, with when i do this song uh you know when we would talk about getting people on the show you know once in a while daryl would say who do you guys want to have on the show and i'd be like a broken record i go Cheap trick, cheap trick, because <laughs> I'm a huge fan since yeah. back in the day, 78. So, uh, so, so that that definitely one of the highlights. But it's really all the guitar players, and and you know I'm sort of known as the keyboard player on mm-hmm. that show. Once in a blue moon, I play guitar right. on the show. But uh, you know, and I always say when Daryl asked me to join Hall and Oates, that was the position that was open. It was the keyboard position, so it just stuck. Um, so, but, but my favorites on the show are all guitar players, Joe Walsh, yeah. uh, um, of course, Todd Rundgren is somebody I grew up listening to, uh, the, another major highlight was, was Billy Gibbons and I was able to play guitar alongside him on that, that particular yeah. episode cause he brought some keyboard players. So, um. So yeah, Joe Walsh, Billy Gibbons, Cheap Trick, but there have been a lot. There have been, yeah. you know, yeah, Smokey, Smokey Robinson, Robinson yeah, yeah, in the beginning. So you know, Booker T. Um, I've had so many pinch me moments on the show. It's it's kind of mind boggling. And there's been some incredible new artists that have right. come on the show too. And like you said, the greatest thing about the show is that uh, the people that are following the show get introduced to mm-hmm. artists that they probably never would have discovered otherwise. So that's the greatest thing about it. Now, is there is there an artist, and you don't have to name them, but are there any artists that have declined, like for whatever? Not just yes. not 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 that they <laughs> they don't like Daryl or they don't like you know that they just didn't want to do it. Yes, I, it, they declined only because of logistical reasons. Okay. I want to say, uh, do you want? I can say a name, but it, I don't it, know. It's up to you. To I have. think it's was Sarah Bareilles. Okay. Uh, because I think she was just about to get a Grammy, and so she signed on to do it, but then something changed, and, and of course, she, she, she got nominated for Grammy. And uh, there was one other guy, too, that was sort of a similar thing, a guy from Britain. I want to say, say his name was James Bay, okay. something like that, uh, who became very popular. But uh, honestly, at this point now, everybody wants to do the show. I want to uh, do the show. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I'll put your name in the ring. Right. Uh, you know, Daryl had a little bit of a throat issue. You had to take a little bit of time off. But over this, uh, and he's great now. He's mm-hmm. completely recovered. Uh, over this last winter, we should have been uh, filming a new season, a new episode. So, right. so we had Dave Grohl lined up. I knew Robert Plant wanted to do it. 
am on the road. So, uh, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing, the company that we have. So hopefully we'll get them back for the next season when we start resuming again. Now, going back to Sammy, and one of the reasons why I just asked that question of people backing out of for whatever reason, there, there was talk that he couldn't, because of Van Halen, he had to play just his solo stuff. He couldn't. You're right. They, they put a stop to it. So, but when That's he play, when he I, plays his live shows, he can do whatever he wants. But on TV, yeah. he's got to get yeah. the rights, you know, from the other guys. So. That's exactly what I heard. I heard that we were uh, planning on doing. Uh, um, is it love? I guess is the when song. When it's love. When it's love. When it's love. Yep. Exactly. Um, that would have been great. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. We were working on it. Uh, I had already worked, started learning it, and then at the last minute they said, "No, we can't because of." of the actual Van Halen camp, they, they kind of put the, the yeah. stop to it. So, you know, yeah, that would, that would have been cool. But, uh, but we were able to do rock candy. <laughs> yeah. Rock candy. And, uh, the other one you guys did out on the, it was, I guess out in the patio or out in yeah. the, at the bar. Um, exactly. We did one acoustically. Yeah. Right. 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 At the end of the show, that, that's, a, that sounded yeah. awesome with, with the harmonies. I mean, the harmonies that you guys do is just, it's just it's insane, you know, coming from oh, someone that you. tries to sing, it, uh, you know, I, sometimes I'll watch that show and I'll just, I'll have my guitar, I'll just put the guitar down. And I'll be like, oh, I'm done. I am done. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, it I was can't. funny when we, when we did that last song out on his, uh, his patio, uh, we just were doing it, going about our thing. And then we, after, after we, we finished that song, we heard all this applause. And yeah, we behind you. And yeah, all, yeah. The, <laughs> all the people were hanging out watching it. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think I still have that episode DVR. It's still on yeah. my, uh, still on my TV. Yeah. So, well, Hall and Oche going back out on the road, and I, I saw you going. Yeah. I think it's September, October, you're going back to like Dublin and in Ireland. And I had, I just recently seen. Uh, yeah. I think it was. I don't know. If it was, it's not called Palladia anymore, but you just. Uh, right. Some, live from Ireland, basically, was. Uh, yes. Was that? So yeah, you're going, you're going back. Yeah. Right, right. So you're going exactly. back there. You're going back there, and now. When you guys are touring, and, and this is one thing that's killing me is, like I said, they're in my top ten of all time, and I, I'm I'm more of a rock, like heavier rock guy, but Hall and Oates is just, it's just, they come on the radio and I I can't turn it off. But one thing that's killing me is I've never gotten to see the see the band live, for yeah. whatever reason, and and this has happened to this other guests I've had on this podcast where. You know, me being a musician too, I every time like you're coming to, uh, I think it's June 24th. You're coming up here. Uh, yeah. Where was that? That's at. That, uh, is it in Boston? Oh, we are coming to Boston. Yeah, a and a I. Guard. Yeah. That's right, and I I can't go again because I am I don't know if I have a gig or I'm I'm away on okay. vacation or something. So. Okay. I, I, I'm constantly checking the, the Hall & Oates website yeah. to, to see when you guys are back in the area, and then it always falls on a date I'm not around. So, Well, That's, well, you know, I just happen, if, you, if you're if you around, I'm doing a solo show the night before TD Garden. And I'm, it's yeah, not I'm in really Nashville. Average. Are you in Nashville? I'm in Nashville, yeah, that whole, okay. that whole week. But I, I did plan on getting out to one of your gigs. I know you're playing in Springfield, too. Is that in... Uh, uh yes I should be is that september Springs. no yeah i think it's september september exactly i think you're right i gotta try to i gotta check yeah, my schedule cool with place. that yep yeah yep. it's not too for I sure played, man i played up the you know, springfield area uh, i can't even count how many times i've been up there but yeah good, yeah. good people up there uh so and for, if you do bring a guitar and i'll have you up for a song <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll do that. That's cool. Uh, we'll do like range or something. <laughs> do you do any hall? Do you do any hall and oats when you do your live shows? You do. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I sent you uh, a while back when I, I had the smile. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I kind of kind of know that. Actually, I, I did know that because a while back I when I was using the Kemper profiling amp, I sent you uh, a message on Facebook and I recorded. Uh, I think it was I think it was Sarah Smile. I recorded it. And you yeah. asked you asked if it was me singing. I'm like, no, that was just a, it's a karaoke <laughs> back in track because oh. <laughs> the guy was really good. But uh, yeah. I, I remember sending that to you, so I, I, I could I could relearn something very easily. How did so. you like the Kemper by the I way? I lo- I loved it. I I, I okay. own two of them, and um, but like we were talking about earlier, we're guitar players were constantly changing things. Yeah. So I, I I've I've had two Kempers. I've had uh, a couple of fractal units. I've had I'm using a Line Six Helix now. I've had that twice, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I'm I'm really liking that. And uh, but as far as yeah, the Kemper was just a buddy of mine that owns a yeah. studio in Swansea, Mass. We sell profiles actually for it. Okay. So yeah, well, we're it, playing. We're we're touring with uh with the Tears for Fears. 
Yeah, and they use whole, them. They use them. Whole, yeah. yeah, exactly. They have yeah. two of them. Yeah. Now, the whole yeah. thing with the Kemper is the you need to if the the profile that you're using isn't good to start with, there's no amount mm-hmm. of tweaking that you can you can do to gotcha. get it to get it right. So you gotta you gotta get a well produced uh, profile to make that but it, really but, but shine. The concept is great because oh, yeah. you can obviously really customize it exactly to. Yeah, you you could go into the studio. Take mm-hmm. your fa- take your favorite amps in the studio. Get the mm-hmm. sound, you know. Get your mics on the amps. Get all that, everything the way you want mm-hmm. it to sound on your album. Then mm-hmm. you pro- you record, you profile that sound. So mm-hmm. and then in post production, you're going back and you're mixing, and you hear something that's off. You're like, uh, instead of yeah. like the old days, you go back and you have to remic everything and try to get that same exact sound. You have a profile of it. Yeah. And then, and then you take that on on the road, and you have the sounds from your albums. Which is great. Yeah. Which so. is great. You know what I found, though, as a, as a guitar player, just for my own personal experience, is that almost having less choices ends up being better for me. Yeah. There's so much great technology out there, which is great, yeah. but sometimes I find, man, you just want to experiment and experiment. I find if I can get something that's in the general uh, league of where, where I'm going tonally, and I mm-hmm. love that, uh, you know, I love that um, old Pete Townsend slash angus young sort of on the verge of breakup yep. and that's what i kind of go for if i can get close to that with less choices i'm mm-hmm. good <laughs> yeah my my problem is and i i always kid myself because like i got the helix and i'm like i need i need all these effects i need this and this and this and then i yeah. when i set up my rig i end up i i always default back to a little bit of reverb i'll get a little delay on my leads in a volume sure. boost and here right. and there, I'll kick a phaser or a flange around, but then, you know, yeah. 75% of the stuff that's in this board that it can do anything, I don't I never end up using. We're so. not using it, I know, yeah. I know. <laughs> but it's good, to, it's good to have, just in case you, you do want to use it. But So, yeah. to, wrap, to let's wrap this up, your album is uh, is called Adventure. It's on your website, yeah. elliotlewis.com. you got a bunch of shows coming up. Hollow Notes is going back out on the road, starting, the, I think you said June 7th, which is... Two days, you're, you're heading back out, and you're doing some solo shows in between. Yep. Uh, is there anything else you want to get out as far as uh, to let people know? And your photography, too. Don't That was a big thing for me when I went to your website. It was like, wow, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. And there's always uh, a lot of uh, new stuff that I add because every tour I end up getting a lot of a lot, lot of new stuff, so I always mm-hmm. try to add it to my, to my website. Uh, but no, I think we've, we've covered this a is, lot of ground here. And, uh, any... Appreciate- uh, any new CD in the works for you? Definitely, yeah. I've already started working on some new stuff. And, you know, I'm, I really like, um, not that I have to, but I like to put out something almost every year. Mm-hmm. There's, there's always a lot of songs bubbling underneath, and I have a lot of stuff already backlogged. So we'll definitely have a new CD out. Probably, uh, I would like to say, sometime mid-year next year. Cool, so yeah. there'll be something new for... For, for that year. I'll, keep, I'll definitely keep an eye out for it and I'll, I'll be happy to yeah. you know, post it and share all that stuff for you. Cool. So once once this podcast goes live, it's probably going to be a few weeks because there's a, yeah. you know, a bunch of people ahead of you. I'll get you all the, the info and you can share whatever you want to do with it. You can throw it in the trash. Fantastic. <laughs> no, absolutely. Awesome. I will, I'll be happy to post And it. I will get out to, to you, not only your solo shows, but I will right. eventually make it to a Hall & Oates show because I have this bucket list and it you know I'm, I'm starting yeah. to check stuff off. So that that's definitely one of them. And, nice. Uh, we'll, we'll check I'd love you guys to have out. You there. Awesome. For sure, man. I appreciate we'll the time. Thank appreciate you, Rich. It. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. Great, man. Keep in touch. All right, man. All right. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye.